In this lesson, we are going to study the distance and midpoint formula. First, let us talk about the Cartesian coordinate system. The Cartesian coordinate system is a two-dimensional plane, this one, where the horizontal axis is your x-axis and your vertical line is your y-axis. A point in the plane is defined by its coordinate, let's call this x, y, where x is the horizontal distance of the point from the origin. So this length here is x units and y is its vertical distance from the origin. So this is y units. You call your x coordinate the abscissa and you call your y coordinate your coordinate. Let us derive the distance formula. Suppose we are given two points. This is x1, y1, and this is the point x2, y2. We want to get the distance between these two points. That is, we want to get the length of this line segment. In order to get the length of this line segment, let us first consider the point x2, y1. This is the point x2, y1. We will form this line segment and this line segment over here. Take note that this is a right triangle because this is just a horizontal line and a vertical line. What is the length of this line segment? Take note that this is just a distance between y1 and y2. So therefore, this is y2 minus y1. And this length here is just the distance between x2 and x1. So that's x2 minus x1. Using the Pythagorean theorem, if this length here is d, we have d squared is equal to the square of x2 minus x1 plus the square of y2 minus y1. So hence, if we get the square root, we now get this distance formula. Hence, to get the distance between two points, all you have to do is to get the difference of the x-coordinates, and then you square it, and then also get the difference of the y-coordinates, square it, and get the sum of the two. So for example, let us find the distance between these two points. Using the distance formula, this is equal to get the difference of the x-coordinates. So that's 2 minus negative 6 squared plus difference of the y-coordinates. So that's negative 5 minus negative 3 squared. Therefore, this is 8 squared. That's 64 plus this is negative 5 plus 3. The square of negative 2 is 4. This is square root of 68. Next, let us show that the triangle whose vertices are 2, 1, 5, 5 and negative 2, 4 is an isosceles triangle. Recall that an isosceles triangle is a triangle with at least two congruent sides. Hence, we just need to find the distance between these points. First, let us get the distance between P and Q. This is equal to the square root of P and Q difference of x coordinates. That's 5 minus 2 squared plus 5 minus 1 squared. We get square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. This is equal to square root of 25 or 5. Next, let us get the distance between q and r. The distance between q and r is again, difference of the x-coordinates is 5 minus negative 2 squared plus 5 minus 4 squared. Therefore, this is 7 squared is 49 plus 1 squared is 1. So this is square root of 50. Lastly, let us get the distance between P and R. 
difference of the x coordinates is 2 minus negative 2, then squared, plus difference of the y coordinates is 1 minus 4 squared. This is 4 squared plus 1 minus 4 is negative 3 squared. That's the same as 3 squared. Therefore, this is equal to 5. So since the length of PQ is the same as the length of PR, the triangle PQR is an isosceles triangle. Next, let us derive the formula of the midpoint. Again, we will be starting with two points. Let's say x1, y1, and x2, y2. First, let us get the line segment connecting these two points. We want to get the midpoint of this line segment here. Now, take note that to get the midpoint, this point actually lies between x1 and x2. What is the number in between x1 and x2? That is just the average. So this is x1 plus x2 over 2. And similarly, the y coordinate is the number in between, strictly halfway between y1 and y2. And that is just their average. y1 plus y2 over 2. So therefore, the midpoint is x1 plus x2 all over 2, y1 plus y2 all over 2. The midpoint of two points is just the average of x coordinates. That will be the x coordinate of your midpoint and the y coordinate will just be the average of your y coordinates. So for example, the diameter of a circle has endpoints 2, negative 5, and negative 6, negative 3. Find the center of the circle. Suppose that this is our circle. You don't really have to draw it in the Cartesian plane. I'm just drawing it so that we can imagine. Let's say this is P. This is 2, negative 5. And this is the point negative 6, negative 3. We want to get the center of the circle. But take note that the center of the circle will just be the midpoint of these two points. All we have to do is to get this point M. And M, according to our midpoint formula, is the average of the x-coordinate. So that's 2 plus negative 6 all over 2. And the y-coordinate is the average of your y-coordinates. Negative 5 plus negative 3 all over 2. This is negative 4 over 2, so that's negative 2. Negative 5 plus negative 3 over 2, that is negative 8 over 2 or negative 4. That is the center of your circle. Next, find the point Q if the midpoint is given, that is 2, negative 1, and one point is given, 3, 4. In this problem, we are given one endpoint, 3, 4. We want to solve for Q if we're given M. In our previous example, we were given the two endpoints and we were supposed to find the midpoint. Let us suppose that Q is the point AB. We need to find A and B using the midpoint formula. 2, negative 1 must be the same as the average of the x-coordinates of P and Q. So that's A plus 3 over 2. And the y-coordinate is the average of the y-coordinates of P and Q. So that's B plus 4 all over 2. This means that 2 must be equal to A plus 3 over 2 and negative 1 must be equal to b plus 4 all over 2. Hence, here we get that 4 is equal to a plus 3 which means that a is equal to 1. This means that negative 2 is equal to 
b plus 4, which gives us that b is equal to negative 2 minus 4. So that's negative 6. So therefore, our point Q is the point 1, negative 6.